Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got something really really interesting. In 8 weeks, around 8 weeks from now, these two superstar bodybuilders Andrew Jacked and Rubiel Muscara aka Nexila are gonna face each other in Dubai, pro. As of right now, both of them have confirmed participation. So in this video, we're gonna do a comparison, we're gonna go pose for pose, their best edition so far, and see what might happen at this show. Now, as of right now, of course, Andrew Jack is way more established. So he's definitely the favorite to win this show. After placing third at the Arnold Classic, fifth at a Mr. Olympia, and winning multiple pro shows, he is definitely the safe best bet here but it's not so clear it's not so black and white you're gonna see why so like i said andrew jack has been a pro for a while and he's done so many great things and yes he's the favorite but he is kind of hit or miss like in the Arnold Classic, for example, he brought great conditioning, it was actually good conditioning, probably the only time when his conditioning was decent, and he truly pushed Nick and Samson, he actually stood right next to them and he actually looked very comparable, so if he brings something like this, it's gonna be really difficult for anybody, including Nexilla, to beat him, but how often does that happen? Not very often. For example, his last edition, the 2023 Mr. Olympia, he was way off, he was just really, really off, it was very, very bad. I'm not even gonna show you his rear side, because we all know that's where he holds the most fat and water, and it was a disaster from behind, it was really, really unprofessional, it just didn't look good. However, it's crazy, this guy is that good, that even coming off like that, he places top 5 in the world. He's 5th best bodybuilder in the world right now, even when he is off. Which tells you how dangerous he truly is, what his potential actually is. He's kinda like Samson, like he's doing really well, even though he's not very conditioned, he has soft glutes, soft hamstrings, and like overall he always has a film of water or whatever. He's never truly peeled and dry, I mean it rarely happens, and still he does really well. Both of these two guys, Rubiel Muscara and Andrew Jack, are genetic freaks. They are definitely abnormal, I mean, their ascent in bodybuilding world was truly dramatic and rather fast. Now, Rubiel Muscara, he only competed in one pro show, and that was the day after he turned pro. When Andrew Jack turned pro, he waited like 6-7 months before he competed in his first pro show, Rubiel did it the next day. And it's also very difficult to look good two days in a row. And he actually stood next to Samson Dauda and Michal Krizjo, and he was holding his ground, he was even more dominant in certain poses, like side tricep and this pose also potentially he was better, he was more impressive, it was really insane. The problem with Rubil Mosquera is the fact that he already cancelled like three shows so far, he was supposed to do the Arnold Ohio, then Arnold UK, and the New York Pro, and that's why right now he decided to cancel all of them, but now he's saying he's gonna do the Dubai Pro, which honestly makes sense, Dubai Pro is now third biggest show in the world, if you consider Arnold Classic uh, one show and then Mr. Olympia, Dubai Pro is the next one on the list, and Rubiel Muscara has an actual chance of winning that one. Winning Arnold Classic against Hari Chopin or winning the New York Pro against Nick Walker, that's pretty much nearly impossible to achieve. But winning Dubai Pro against Andrew Jack, that's a possibility, guys. I believe it's very possible. You're gonna see why in the comparison video. But I gotta say, it's a very, very interesting comparison because both of these guys have completely different physiques. Andrew Jack's nickname is Mona Lisa of bodybuilding, because his physique is super aesthetic, it's really a beautiful physique, and Rubiel Muscara's nickname is Nexilla, coming from Godzilla, because he is a freak, he's like the freak of the freaks, one of the most freakiest bodybuilders of today, if not the most freaky bodybuilder. So right off the bat, people will be divided, I think majority will like Andrew more because he's more aesthetic, most people prefer classic lines, aesthetic look, and there are hardcore bodybuilding fans who only want to see, well, hardcore bodybuilding, like as much muscle as possible, with as good of a conditioning as possible, and that's it, a freak factor. But in this video, it won't really matter which one you are, because you're gonna go pose for pose, and we're gonna see which poses are won by Andrew, and which are won by Rubiel, and we're gonna see who wins majority of the poses, and that's how we're gonna conclude who is actually a better bodybuilder. Before we begin, I got one last thing to say, and that's that 
Rubio Mosquera had some time to actually make progression. I already said that he competed as a pro only a day after he turned pro. So now that he had a bit of an off season, and here is him right now, I think he probably made some progress, and if things go well for him, he's gonna be better than the last time we saw him. I mean, this guy is a legit freak. Like, there aren't many bodybuilders who put muscle on like this guy, so you can expect him to be bigger, better, more impressive, and also possibly he will be even more conditioned, you know, better peaked, stuff like that, so it's not gonna be exactly Rubiel from Prague Pro, it's probably gonna be a little bit better version of Rubiel, I mean, he could come in off, but let's hope for the best, let's hope he brings something better, here you can see his back, for example, it does look maybe a little bit improved. And if he changes the way he's hitting certain poses with Chris Cormier in his corner, he could also improve in that way as well. And Andrew Jack, he also took some time off, he didn't do the Arnold this year, so he also might be better, but again, as I said, with Andrew Jack, so far, it's been hit or miss, so we don't know what kind of conditioning Andrew Jack is gonna bring, he could be insane and just destroy everybody, or he could be completely off and leave room for Nexilla to beat him, because I think in certain poses Nexilla is better. Let's go, let's start with the first pose from Double Bicep. So like I said, Andrew Jack from the Arnold Classic, which was his best in my opinion, and of course Nexilla from his only pro show, Prague Pro. From Double Bicep, this pose, like many others, is apples and oranges. Andrew Jack is definitely more aesthetic, smaller waist, better lines, better conditioning even, details and stuff like that, but his arms and his legs, his limbs simply are not as massive as Nexilla. By the way, I'm not sure if I got the ratio right, but it is what it is. As far as the front double bicep, yeah, again, if you are a fan of muscle, a lot of mass, you might like Nexilla. I don't like the way he's hitting it, I think he could change it and look better in this pose, but overall, I gotta give this one to Andrew, I think it's pretty obvious. I mean, the flow of his physique in this pose, it's just really good, even though his limbs are not as massive, as round, as full, as Rubio's. I think it's still pretty clear that Andrew Jack wins this pose, so that's 1-0 for Andrew. Now we go to the next pose, uh, front lat spread, and in this one, Andrew has like a lot of details, you know, his chest is like really separated and detailed, his abs also, his, his quads, even when he is off, have feathers, have striation everywhere, so with all of his detail and his small waist and like small joints, he does look very impressive in this one, but this is also a very good pose for Rubio Mosquera because he's so massive. And Andrew, he might come off a little bit stringy next to Rubio. Especially because of legs, and I would say arms, forearms. Rubio's limbs are just definitely way more dominant. But his torso, it's not as good as Andrew's. He doesn't have that much detail in the chest or the abs. And I think his massive neck is also hurting him. So in this one, I think it's pretty close, but I would have to give it to Andrew Jack. Because also in the lineup, he looks really impressive in this one. He really stands out with his height, with his crazy wee taper, actually X-frame, all the details he can show in this pose. So I give this one to Andrew, it's 2-0 for Andrew right now. So we did two front poses, now we're gonna move on to the side poses, in which Rubiel's density and thickness might come in handy, might actually help him a lot. Personally, I don't like the way Andrew Jack is hitting the pose, maybe he can do it better, maybe his arms are just a little bit too long so he can't do it any better than this, I think he could, but it is what it is, it's what we got, this is how he's hitting it, also his legs from the side, not the thickest legs ever, right, and he's not really showing a lot of details in, 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 in the side leg, in the glutes and like hamstrings are not really uh, sweeping that much, they're not really hanging super low, uh, he also looks kind of, you know, flatter to the chest and, and like chest to back thickness is not where it needs to be, to be on the level of Rubio, I think Rubio crushes Andrew Jack in this one, and I'll say it again, he crushes him, he destroys him, I mean, it was pretty close in the side poses against Samson, even, but Andrew Jack, with his size, he can't stand next to Rubio Mosquera. he's gonna kill him in the side poses. Look at this, look at the difference in the legs, man. This is night and day, it's not even a comparison, let's not even look at this anymore, it's, it's not even close. And that's definitely not all, torso, the same story, upper body, I mean, look at the arms, the chest, really, I don't think I need to go over this anymore, I think it's pretty obvious for everybody, 
Robil Mosquera kills Andrew Jack inside the chest. Now, for some really strange reason, I have no idea what the reason is, I would bet that uh, Rubiel somehow forgot to hit the side tricep in his posing routine. That's literally his best pose. Of all poses, that's the best one. At the Prague Pro, against the best version of Samson Dauda, which his wife picked him for, against Grigio and Nathan Viasha, I think he was annihilating everybody in this pose, including Samson. This has to be one of the best side triceps of all time in bodybuilding. I mean, name me a couple of others, like you could probably say maybe Rolly Winkler, but he couldn't even hold the pose, he couldn't even grab his hand behind his back, uh, so I don't know, I mean, this is definitely one of the most impressive side triceps I've ever seen, not just the triceps, I mean, his arms are looking insane, and his torso, like his chest and shoulders and everything, but like the lower body, the calves even, he was just insane in this one. So, now, against Andrew Jack, do we really need to go over this one? I think it's pretty clear that Rubiel destroys him in this one. He kills pretty much everybody. I mean, how many people can stand next to Rubiel in the side tricep and actually look comparable, look better right now, today in the world? I don't think there is anybody, really. Derek, Hardy, Samson? No, no, no. And most certainly not Andrew Jack. Andrew's side poses are his weakest because he's not the thickest guy. He lacks that front to back thickness. He has a great silhouette, great shape, great proportions. But in the side poses, you're gonna see how thick a bodybuilder is. And, and Rubio Mosquera is thick for days. He is freaking massive. And with his side leg, with details, and also the glutes, and the hamstrings, and calves even. Even though judges don't really care about calves, in this pose, they're really adding to the physique. Also, upper body, the triceps are just blowing out like crazy. Even the torso, I mean, the way he's holding his abs tucked in, with the chest popping out. You can't even see how big his neck is, which is a good thing here. So, in this one, Ruby Mosquera wins side tricep, for sure. The front tricep of Andrew Jack is really good, but he can't hit the pose that way. Tyler Mannion was very specific about that. If he does it that way, he's gonna lose the pose, so it doesn't matter. He loses the side tricep against Rubiel anyways. Now, as far as the back double bicep, I believe most of you, like myself, probably expected this to be much closer or Andrew Jack to be even better than Rubiel Mosquera. I mean, Rubiel is not exactly known for the best back, but... You can say his back is not good, it's actually pretty big, pretty thick, and also pretty wide. I mean, his legs are kind of overpowering his back, but his back is not small. And also his legs from behind, even though he's not, he's not a lot more conditioned than Andrew Jack, he has more details in the glutes and hamstrings. That's just the way he is, I mean, that's the way his muscles are shaped. Also, I really don't like the way Andrew is hitting the pose right here. He does it a couple of different ways, but this is the one that we caught here. But I mean, if he did it differently, it still wouldn't look better than Rubiel, in my opinion, at least. I don't think Andrew is ever gonna have details, you know, striations in his glutes or hamstrings. Though, I do think he improved his back. I think it was better than Mr. Olympia later, and it's probably gonna be even better at the Dubai Pro, so... You know, he might look better than right here, but this is what we got, this is what we're looking. From what I'm seeing right here, Rubiel wins this one, and that's 3-2 for Rubiel right now. Let's check out the other back pose, back lat spread. Like I said, Rubiel, his back is good, it's, it's actually pretty wide. Yeah, his legs are dominant, but he can open up those lats, he can actually be pretty wide in the shoulders... Andrew Jack, because of his small waist and like better proportions, he might look even better in this one. Again, lower body, it's Rubiel all day long, but because of the proportions, because of the symmetry, I gotta give this one to Andrew Jack. I do think it's a pretty close call, but I'll give it to Andrew Jack because also he's a little bit taller than, than Rubiel and I didn't get the ratio here right, so he would be bigger, probably wider in the shoulders with better proportions, smaller waist. I mean, it's really close, but I just like the way Andrew's back lat spread is flowing, so I'll give him this one. That makes it 3-3. Three, three. Now, we move on to the most muscular pose, and usually, a freakier, a bigger bodybuilder wins a most muscular pose. I mean, the name of the pose tells you everything, and who is bigger here? I mean, of course, Rubio is definitely way more massive, especially, especially it shows in this pose, now, Andrew Jack hit a couple of different variations, I picked this one, I think it's the best one of his, but 
Rupiel also looks very good in all of his variations because of his mass, because he's so freaking round and big and wide and like with his legs and his arms and everything, really chest, I mean, he's just so freaky that I don't think there is a chance of Anderjack beating him in this one, even if he's more aesthetic, even if his waist is smaller, even if his neck is smaller and he looks more aesthetic, still, this is a most muscular shot, Rubiel takes this one hands down, so that's 4-3 for Rubiel, surprising, right? I thought Andrew would win more poses, but it is what it is. Now we come to the absent ties, which is probably Andrew Jack's best pose. For some reason, Rubio Mosquera did not hit it in his posing routine, which, again, I don't know why, because he's really good in this one as well. His abs are also really prominent. You cannot say that his abs are weak, you know, shallow, anything like that. He has details, deep separation, and great development of his abs. Lower body, of course, Rubio kills Andrew Jack in terms of size. But that's also what is hurting him in this pose, the symmetry, the proportions, right? Upper body to lower body ratio is off with Rubio, and Andrew Jack is in perfect balance. Also, he has more details in the legs. Andrew's legs are also really good, and also, he has a smaller waist, his lats are popping more, so I gotta give this one to Anderjack, even though maybe some of you, fans of like a really freaky muscle, might choose Rubio because of his legs are like one of the biggest legs of all time, you know, it's hard to ignore them, but, but this is bodybuilding, and bodybuilding is not all about size, it's about proportion, symmetry and stuff like that, so I gotta give this one to Andrew because of his also conditioning, you know, details, it's not that uh, Rubiel is less conditioned in terms of body fat percent, but he doesn't have the same details. It's probably because of his muscle in his legs are so thick, so dense that they're hiding the separation. And Andrew is showing cross separation very deep, and so with his balance and his proportions, small waist, stuff like that, I give him this one, which makes it 4-4. Four, four. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again, yes, Andrew Jack is still the favorite to win this because he's more proven, but guys, guys, expect Nexilla to be improved as well, to be much better because he only competed once as a pro, he's probably gonna be more conditioned and more developed, more freaky, and he wins poses, right, like you saw it, he's very good in poses, maybe when he stands there in the front relaxed, you would say Andrew is better, but when he hits the poses, it's really hard to beat him in certain ones. Anyways, it's gonna be a very exciting show, very, very interesting comparison. In my opinion, this is gonna be the top two. You guys tell me down below in the comment section if you agree with everything I said, with all the poses, and overall, who do you think is gonna win? Because right now, I have no conclusion, honestly. Yes, Andrew is the favorite, but I'm a fan of Mass, man. I mean, when I see Rubiel, I'm so impressed with his size, so I wanna see him do well, and also he's the underdog here, and it will be really exciting if he beat Andrew Jack, which would put him in the top five position in the world, which would be an amazing story, but you guys tell me down below in the comment section, what do you think, what's your opinion, and if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.